decision on whether you can take a, a defensive driving No, I mean, I didn't mean the defensive. I'm sorry. I lost track. The eviction. Oh, I'm the back eviction. on the eviction. That caller okay. first said something about within six months. Well, let, let me let me address the driver's safety. Okay, and I'll go come ahead. back to the eviction. <laughs> a, a couple points on the defensive driving that are really important, and maybe to help answer the question a bit more. If you have to request a certified copy of your Texas driving history. It takes a while to get that. There's two ways to get it. You can request it online uh, through a DPS site, and it costs $12, or you can request it by mail. Either way that you request it, it takes a while to get it back. It takes at least 30 days in most cases, mm -hmm. at least the experience in our court. If you're only given 90 days to take the, the course and to get this paperwork, you better request a certified copy of your driving record early. All right. The driver's safety course, once you complete it, and it makes sure you ask for a state-approved driver's safety course. Some of the driver's safety courses aren't state-approved. But if you, once you take that class, make sure you leave enough time for that certificate to come back to you, and then you have to sign mm -hmm. it, and then you have to deliver it to the court. And so it takes usually two weeks or so from the time you complete the class to turn that certificate back in to the court. And so there's a lot of documents. The 90 days sounds like a lot of time. It actually goes very quickly. It goes by quick. Okay. Judge, you wanted to mention uh, also about the, was it the 90-day period? Well, no, on the, well, first on the, uh, uh, on the d defensive driving, let's say uh, you've done everything you're supposed to do, but you didn't get your certificate in time, you were ill, <laughs> you had some reason you couldn't make it back in, within 90 days. If you're still within 90 days but you don't have it all done, you can ask the court uh, for what's called a show cause hearing, and you would have to come to the court for that, explain what's going on, and ask the court for more time. Okay. So there is an opportunity that maybe they'll get an extension. Right. Because right. that was also one of the questions. Right. We uh, have a similar process in municipal court. So municipal court, the same thing. Right. right. If within the 90 days, I find myself, you know, pushed for time. And I can go there and ask if I get an extension. Yes, but would want to really see that there's been some effort made to take the class already or to send off and request your, your driving record from DPS. So they can't just wait and then come in and ask for a request. They must have been doing some steps exactly. along the way in order to be yeah, granted an because extension. Because, again, you don't have to grant the extension. That's right. That's that the prerogative right. of, the, of the court. That's correct. And I hope that's clear to you, ladies and gentlemen. It, it, you know, the judges are not saying here that it's a, a given you have the right to request it. So hopefully if nothing's, but again, if the judges mention, if there's, you show that you've done a sincere effort in good faith and something really happened to you, whether you got really ill or, or a family member you had to take care of and you're able to show that to the court, uh, most of the judges are very considerate. It's just that they don't, uh, you know, we don't want you to think you can just walk in there and say, I want an extension, period. It's not how it works. Uh, let me get to this caller. Um, you on the air? Go ahead, please. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I'm having trouble with the phone. I don't know if it's my phone. I apologize. But if y'all could speak a little louder so we can hear. Okay. Yeah. I, don't, uh, I had called uh, earlier, and I just wanted to clarify a question about the eviction. Okay. I got you. Okay. Go ahead. The, okay. The, 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 the parties were served. The, the consul came out and served the citation. The parties went to court. The judge postponed the matter until some later date, but never did set a letter date. And since that time, six months have passed. What would the presiding JP judge do in terms of the code of judicial conduct where this particular judge has not uh, adjudicated the matter in a prompt uh, fashion? I mean, what would he do, you know, to to make him hear the case or what, it, what have you? I'll hang up and listen to you. Let me ask the judge, is the question clear? I, I okay. think I understand, but... Uh, remember that whoever filed the case, the, whoever the plaintiff, the landlord who filed the case, uh, uh, then it's their responsibility to pursue it. Let's say the parties say, well, there's some extenuating circumstances and we want to agree to extend this for a period of time. Uh, but it's the plaintiff's responsibility to push this, but that initial hearing has to take place within six days after the party has been served, the defendant has been served, the tenant has been served, they, ha they have six days in which to hear that case. And, uh, you know, 
I, I don't know of any exceptions to that whatsoever. Does that make sense? Because I, I, I heard your question, but I don't see also why the judge would say to you, to the folks, uh, I want to postpone this. I'll let y'all know later. Okay. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm still. And you know what? I'll, I'll also leave you my number where you can call us and I can maybe talk more with you and, and ask, call the appropriate judges and find out for you the information. Okay. okay? I'll, I'll be more than happy. I'll also give you another way to do that. Uh, each of the uh, judges has a an email site. If you go to that uh, Harris County Justice Court website, click on the judge, then there is an email site for each one of us. And, and so whatever precinct, like I'm in precinct five, place one, you can go to our website, you can send an email. And if you want to send it to uh, uh, our court, it'll come to me and we'll look at the situation and answer it for you. Thank you very much for calling back and clarifying that. Thank you. Thank Have you a good very evening. much. Goodbye. I don't know if the phone, uh, you know, we got the speaker here, but apparently we're having trouble. I don't know if it's, and I've got the volume already up. So those of you at home can just help out by speaking a little louder to help us out. Uh, at this time, uh, we're ready for T-Ray News? It was a caller's phone? Okay. Two more minutes. We got two more minutes? All right, well, we got time to, uh, a real delicate subject. Do y'all <laughs> handle the red light camera citations? We do handle those. Um, what will happen is if you're the registered owner of a vehicle that is photographed going through a red light at one of these specific intersections, you'll receive a notice um, and then you're, you know, it tells you to pay the $75. It's a civil case, it's not a criminal case. Um, if you want to contest it, those um, contests are heard at the municipal court at 1400 Lubbock. And you need to call and you can schedule a time to come in and view the video. So someone that gets one of these tickets of the mail, mm -hmm. they want to contest it, they call what number? Or they call? Well, they, they can call, um, I don't have to check with my assistant as okay. far as the main number, or the, or the, the maybe citation. Maybe call 311 well, also and ask. And the citation, the notice will have it'll that have on, on there. there. Right, so you can look at that and it'll give you But I think that's, that's important information, to, uh, right. ladies and gentlemen at home. You know, if you know someone that has it, talk to them about that, because I know there's a lot of issues made about this, and there's a political issue, and then there's the, the legal process. We need to distinguish that. Right. Okay. But these are, these are civil matters, not criminal matters, and they're not reported on people's driving records. But it's But a that civil doesn't process. mean that you have to ignore it. No. Because, folks, just because it's not a criminal matter, there's civil sanctions that can be taken against you. You need to understand that. You know, having a driver's license is not a privilege. It's not a constitutional right for us to have a driver's license. It's a privilege. And that can become part of the civil sanctions. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, you know, just as we're making it clear, the judge is making it clear it's not a criminal case. I don't want you at home thinking we don't have to respond to that. So let's be clear on that, folks. Uh, and we got another caller. Let's take to this caller. You're on the air. Go ahead, please. Hello. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. Yes. Uh, recent, well, it's been some time. I was involved in a hit-and-run accident uh, where, the, of course, the person took off and all. Uh, that person was, you know, uh, arrested and all. It turned out that the, she didn't have a insurance so I paid through my uh, insurance and all and w what steps can I do now to get that in other words if, is there any way I can get money that I had to pay out of my insurance from that person now yeah there is and I'll, I'll let Judge Ridgeway explain that okay okay thank you thank you it's a good it's a good question mm -hmm. a lot of people ask that too because they're okay. deductible uh, whatever out-of-pocket expense they came out with judge what suggestions do you have excellent uh, again uh, very simply, you can go to our website. You can uh, uh, key on the words small claims court. We actually have forms available. You can download them off the internet if you want to use it. And then you, uh, if you don't have that, you don't have access to the internet, you can still come to our courts and we have small claims forms. And you would explain there uh, on those forms what damages you're seeking. 